Step one. Okay. Gotta stop working on Maze Lab and need to focus on chapter 17. Okay. Um, this is a tree. See, this is important stuff. Um, in computer science, though, when we look at a tree, we look at trees like this, um, where the root of the tree is at the top and then the leaves go down. Um, I don't know why, but we do. So here's how we usually draw them. So here's like the, the British Royals. Um, and so the root of the tree again is at the top and it splits off as, as we go. There is a lot of terminolo terminology related to trees. That is what section one in chapter 17 focuses on. That's what the guided notes focuses on. And so it's just important that you understand all these words like root and leaf and child and sibling and parent um, and ancestor and all these different terms that are used with trees. Um, many of them work well. Um, okay. Many of them work well in terms of um, thinking about like a family tree, which is why I'm showing you the picture of the, the royal family, British royal family. Um, because things like siblings and parent and child make sense because they're actually siblings and parents and children. Um, but we use those terms for all trees regardless of the type of data that we're storing in them. Um, so the terminology side of things um, are all here. These are like all the key terms that we need to know. Um, we're not gonna go through all of that together. Um, rather, that's what section one in the text is for. Um, that's what the guided notes focuses on and that's what the canvas quiz focuses on. Um, but these are like the 12 terms that we'll use throughout. Um, one note, oops, sorry. One note, um, height, I think it's height. Um, there's a little bit of a discrepancy about from different textbooks in terms of how you measure the height of the tree. Um, so just, just be aware of that. It's called out in the textbook, which is nice. Um, so some people count how many like levels of nodes there are um, and others count like how many layers between those there are. So like when we look at this tree, some texts are going to say there's the height of this tree is one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, other people are going to count it based on like the links between and be like, oh, there's one, two, three, four, five. So they're within one of each other, but um, there are slightly different definitions and different textbooks related to data structures. So I just want to be upfront about that. Um, we'll focus on the definition our textbook uses, um, but like when you take another data structures course in the future, I don't want you to be like, wait a minute. Um, yeah, there's not like an agreement. All right, so that's all the terminology stuff. Um, we're going to focus together more on some code things and some application things. Um, so another place a tree shows up a lot is directories. So if you think back to your Raspberry Pi and how your Raspberry Pi is laid out, um, there is the root directory, the slash. Um, there's all these directories at that root level, um, bin and dev and Etsy. Um, home is where your like user account is located. Unless you changed it, it's called Pi, um, but you may have changed it to your name. Um, so be home and your login name here. And then inside of that, you have folders like, you know, documents, downloads, desktop, all of that type of stuff. So that's another way of thinking about another use of a tree, a generic tree. Um, here's another application of a tree. This is the Java abstract syntax tree. So a big place that um, trees are used um, is in the parsing of of language and, and certainly the parsing of programming languages. Um, and so you can basically describe the grammar of a programming language with a tree. Um, and so this is showing a different aspect of, of that and the different a, um, aspects that go in um, to uh, the syntax of, of the Java programming language. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, so that's a a more sophisticated application of a tree. Um, but I just wanted to give you three examples to begin with, and then we'll get to more specialized types of trees later on in this unit. But for now, we're gonna talk, just focus on generic trees, um, which could be used for abstract syntax, could be used for directories, could be used for like family tree. All of those are related. Um, 
so we're going to write um, our own little tree class today. So switch over to, whoa, I will zoom this in significantly. Switch over to VS Code. Open up the Chapter 17 Class Notes um, folder. I will make this a little bit more readable for us. There we go. Um, and there's already a class in there called tree. And so we're gonna add a little bit more to this. Um, and we're gonna start with a tree in which each node, that's the kind of like the element in the tree has an arbitrary number of children. Um, that aligns well with like, you know, a family tree like this. Like each node here can have zero or many children, right? Um, and so we're gonna take a similar approach with the tree class that we are going to, to write. So there's already some, like the methods here are kind of like um, little skeleton code here. We're gonna fill it in. Um, we're gonna write, get a basic tree working today so that we can make some progress. We're gonna come back and revisit this class a few days later. Um, when we talk about some more sophisticated stuff related to, to trees. Um, one other thing I guess I meant to, to, I forgot to share earlier in terms of chapter 17. We're not gonna do all of chapter 17 just because of the time we have. Um, so in terms of like your more traditional, like college level, sophomore college level data structures course, they would do a little bit more with trees. Really what we leave out are what are called red black trees. Um, and how those work and how to balance those. If you're like, I'm really interested in red black trees and I wanna know that stuff, it is in the book. They do a great job with it. Um, we just felt it wasn't critical for this course. So we're gonna do arbitrary trees. We're gonna do binary trees. We're gonna do binary search trees. We're gonna do visitor patterns. Um, and then we're gonna move on. So just, we're not gonna do all of chapter 17. All right, so let's look at our tree here. So you're gonna notice several similarities between trees and linked lists in terms of like how we implement them. Um, question? No, sure. um, in terms of how we implement them. So much like in the linked list class, we had an inner class that was a node. In our tree class, we're also gonna have an inner class that is a node. Um, so let's finish implementing that together. It's gonna to be similar as to what we did with linked list. Um, even though you are now comfortable doing generics because of the maze lab, we're going to keep this simple and we're just going to make our data of type object like we did with the linked list. Okay. Um, so we could do angle bracket T for tree and angle bracket T for node and do everything in terms of T like you did with my stack and my Q. Um, but I don't want to, I don't want that type of complexity here. Since this is an arbitrary tree, meaning there can be an arbitrary number of children for each node, we can't just have an instance variable next like we had in a linked list. Each node needs to maintain a list of all of its children. So we're also gonna have a list of nodes, which are the children. So those are the data structure, or those are the instance variables we need for our node class. The tree itself, if we think about the tree itself, much like a singly linked list only needs a single instance variable, which is a reference to the head of the list, um, a tree only needs a single instance variable of type node, which is the root of the tree. The root of the tree is this node here. So that's all we need. If we have a reference to the root, we can find everything else that we need to find. All right, we'll come back to the size method in a moment. Let's look through the other code within this tree class um, and see what we need to do to implement each of these methods uh, to get us started. So um, the constructor, takes a single parameter, which is the data of type object for the root node. So this says it constructs a tree with one node and no children. So we're not worried about having an empty tree as we're writing this class together today. Our tree has at least one node, it at least has a root. 
um, here's the data for that root. So when this method is, when this constructor is called, when we're making a new tree, we need to initialize that root instance variable. Um, so again, hopefully this looks familiar to some of the stuff we did in the previous chapter. We're gonna create a new node and assign that to our instance variable root, very similar to what we did in the linked list. And then we're gonna initialize each of the instance variables of that new node to the appropriate data. So the user has specified the data for the root node. And because right now we're creating a new tree with one node and no children, um, we're gonna create a new, a new array list because we want it not to be null. We want a valid list. It's just that the list is empty. Okay, so every node is gonna have a list. If that node has no children, then the list is, is empty. We don't want it to be null. So that's how we get started with that. Where things do, I'm trying to make lots of connections here to linked lists because that's what we're most familiar with, but where things do get a little bit more complicated is this is how we like build the tree out um, with a linked list it's really easy just to like add elements to the end pull them off the beginning things like that when we build a tree it's a little harder so we take a slightly different approach we do have this constructor which gives us a new tree with a single node but then how we build the tree from there um, is with this other method called add subtree that takes as a parameter another tree and what this does is the tree on which add subtree is called takes this tree, the subtree, and adds it as a child um, to the root, okay? And so just to help us visualize that, let me put this back up here, which is helpful. Um, the way we would build a tree like this is we'd start from the bottom and work our way up. So we'd like make a new tree for Savannah and then we'd make a new tree for Peter, and then we'd call add subtree on the tree for Peter and pass the tree for Savannah. That's how we'd get that part done, okay? And then we'd make new trees for like all these kids, William, Harry, Zara, blah, 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 blah. When it comes to Charles, we'd make a new tree for Charles, and then we'd call add subtree and we'd add William, and we'd call add subtree again, and we'd add the tree for Harry. For Anne, we'd call abs, add subtree, and we'd pass the subtree for Peter, which already has Savannah as a tree. So we work our way from the bottom up until we build this entire tree, okay? Um, so it's, it's a little bit more complicated than it is to build a linked list because, well, you know, a tree is a little bit more complicated than, than a list, so. Um, so given that mental picture, the complexity is in envisioning how we use this method. Implementing this method is crazy simple. On children for the root, we simply call the add method on the list and we specify the root of that subtree. That's it. Um, so the code is, is straightforward. Well, I was gonna say that, okay, the code isn't necessarily straightforward. There isn't a lot of code but the concept is, is challenging. What's cool though, is between this method and this constructor, we can build any arbitrary tree we want. That's all it takes are just those methods. But we wanna do a lot of stuff with our tree too. And so for the purposes of today, we're gonna to start with like, oh, let's actually implement the size method. So we can calculate the size of the tree. By size, we mean the number of nodes in the tree. So we just wanna count each and every node in the tree. One, another difference between our implementation of trees and linked lists is that we, we did all the really code and all the heavy lifting in the linked list class itself. Um, when it comes to trees, we tend to rely more upon the nodes to help us do these different calculations and less the tree class. We use that inner node class more. So let's see, let's do an example of that together because you're gonna be doing several more examples of that um, in our various like programming activities here. 
so we are simply going to return whatever the size method returns when we invoke it on the root node. So basically we're gonna tell the root node, hey, count how many nodes, count yourself and all of your children and, and descendants, meaning their children, um, and so on and so forth, and just return that value. So now we'll go back up here to the size method and we'll actually see how to implement um, the size. Uh, so let's initialize a local variable to one because there is the node that we are just invoked the size method on. So there's at least one node. And then we want to add in the node of all of its children. This is inherently recursive. There's a ton of recursion applications when it comes to trees. Um, so we are going to make a little for loop and we're gonna say for each child node, so for each child in children, we're gonna increment sum by whatever the size of that child's subtree is. So you can imagine you're a node, you're like, well, there's me, that's one. And then you don't want to count all your descendants. So you go to each of your children and you say, hey, you count yourself and all of your descendants and tell me how many there are. Um, and you do that for each of the children, we add it in and then we return it as we go. Um, so this is certainly a recursive method, right? We're calling the size method recursively. Um, it may not be exactly clear what the terminating condition is because we don't really have an if statement here, but there still is a terminating condition. At some point, a node has no children. At some point, that list is empty, which means this for loop doesn't run at all, and we simply return a value of one because there's what we call a leaf node, a node with no children, okay? So there still is a terminating condition, um, even though we don't have like a, an if statement make, that makes that clear. All right, I think it's helpful to look at the, the de tree demo class to actually see how all this stuff comes together. So here's the tree demo class. It's already written for us, um, but it builds up part of this tree. Um, we're focused down in this part of the tree here. And again, it goes from the bottom up. So we're gonna see us make Savannah, then Peter and add the Savannah subtree, make Zara, then make Anne and add the Peter, Peter and Zara subtrees. So you can see that here. Um, all right, I guess I wrote it the other way, but that's fine. Um, I started at the top and like built it kind of a layer at a time. I guess you can do it either way. Um, but still, creating Anne, creating Peter, adding Peter to Anne, creating Zara, adding Zara to Anne, creating Savannah, adding Savannah to Peter, um, and then printing out the size of this tree. So when we run this, everything should work, and it should say the size of this tree is four. And that's correct, there are four nodes in this tree.